Capcom recently announced another installment in the highly popular Monster Hunter franchise, dubbed Monster Hunter Double Cross. This game was revealed for both the 3DS and recently for the Switch, and the developers have also promised cross-platform support. Both Kaiju and myself have both been acquainted with the series through Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and so we are very excited to see what we surmise will be a tremendous improvement on the formula. Now, what I'm truly excited about with this is this game was announced for 3DS a few months ago, but just a couple days ago, at the time of recording, they announced it for the Switch as well. For, as a casually acquainted, just knowing the pulse of the community a little bit and seeing what they've been wanting, perhaps the single biggest thing they've been wanting to see happen with Monster Hunter is a return to the home console systems. And... They were disappointed that Monster Hunter 4, Ultimate, and Monster Hunter Generations were not on home consoles. I've also seen a lot of people wanting Monster Hunter to be on PlayStation and Xbox as well, but I think though I think there's there's good reason why Capcom is staying with Nintendo. And overall though, I think that the series is returning to home consoles and it's returning to the switch. And this is great news, not only for Nintendo, but also for Capcom as well, because the switch is insanely popular and it's, is going to be another title that can help. It'll be another title that can hopefully do very well on the platform. Kaiju, what are your thoughts? So, um, I have been largely alongside the crowd that has been, pushing for Monster Hunter to return to the home console. I believe the last game that was on the home console was actually Monster Hunter 3, which yeah. did have a Wii U version, but every single game since then has been exclusively on the handheld. And while I don't think that it's a bad thing, in fact, I think for many intents and purposes, it is a good thing that it's on the handheld console. In fact, I think it's ideally suited for a handheld console. The complaints that I see, though, when it, when it comes to being on the home console is that people are looking for a game that has improved graphics and improved overall capabilities in the game, right? Because whenever they port yeah. it to a handheld system, there's going to invariably be an element of, of sort of, for lack of a better term, nerfing, where they're going to have to get rid of some features or perhaps tone down some features, all in the name of making it a functional game on a handheld console or on a handheld system. Now, when it was be if it were to be on a home system, there would be even more problems, and I think that's why the Wii U only saw one iteration, and that was the earliest iteration uh, that it received on the on the Wii U, and that was the first one, Monster Hunter Three. So, the 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 unfortunate thing about that is that if you do it on the console, the home console, you're going to invariably sacrifice uh, online mode because we knew that the Wii U struggled with having an online community, whereas the 3DS has had a thriving one, the DS has had a thriving one, and really Nintendo's handheld systems ha are known for their uh, multiplayer, and the con home consoles are less known for that. Now, yeah, I think Nintendo's the Switch for having I, dinosaur attitudes on home console indeed. internet connectivity. <laughs> but I think the Switch now represents a unique and perhaps unprecedented shift to where now making Monster Hunter on the Switch is not merely a perhaps a, a little trendy idea to satisfy the fans. I would now almost argue that it is from a business, from a player standpoint, and from a developer standpoint, nearly required. Seeing as the Switch now combines the capabilities of a home console with the portability and playability and ubiquity of a handheld console. I don't think it's I don't think it's even a hard decision at all. It's not surprising at all, I should say. And um, oh, but overall, I'm extremely surprised and or not surprised. I'm extremely happy that they made the decision to release it on the Switch. Indeed, definitely. And just thinking about moving forward, what this means for the series and for potentially other series as well. The first thing that popped into my mind, well, not really the first thing, but Another major thing that popped in my mind after watching the trailer and reading the news was what implication does this have for Smash? Because there was some amazingly cool armor for the Miis, for, and they were Monster Hunter armor sets for the Miis 
in Smash 4. And it was a tad bit disappointing because I would have liked to see um, like some sort of customizable, kind of like Pokemon Trainer where you have three different classes or three different types of fighters or something. I, I've heard the idea of having a Monster Hunter in Smash and be super customizable like that. I have always thought that was pretty cool, but during the Smash vote, I never really was into that idea. But seeing that Nintendo and Capcom are continuing to pursue this partnership and continuing to only strengthen and deepen it with another iteration on the Switch makes me think that if Nintendo is making a Smash 5 for the Switch, it's pretty likely that we're going to see Monster Hunter a monster hunter included as a playable character um now it's likely but it's not guaranteed we already have mega man as capcom's rep and we all know that sakurai and how he views third-party characters he tends to prefer only having one third-party character from a series or even from another developer to so mega man could just be capcom's rep and that's kind of it but at the same time, I'm not – I think it's a pretty big opportunity, and I think that if Smash 5 is in the works, Sakurai and the team are definitely probably going to consider having the Monster Hunter as a fighter. Now, with that being said, it's still not guaranteed there is going to be a Smash 5. Um, Sakurai, every time – ever since Brawl, he's basically said, oh, this is going to be the last Smash game. Right. And we all know that's probably marketing BS, you know, but Sakurai has stated that he wanted Smash 4 to be the last game. And when you look at Smash 4 and the entirety of the work, it definitely seems like he kind of put his all on the table, you know. And so there's been conflicting rumors as to whether it's going to be a Smash 4 port on the Switch or whether it's going to be a whole new Smash game. I would very much prefer a new Smash game for a number of reasons that we should probably get into another episode. But it, it just knowing what we know about Sakurai and what we know about Nintendo as a developer, it's probably more likely they're going to port Smash 4, which is a little bit unfortunate in my view, but it would be good for smash and it'd be good for this for nintendo and for their sales but i would very much prefer a new smash game indeed just on the tangent of smash the only thing i'll say on that is that i think that in the, in the long run the probability of smash coming to the switch is guaranteed almost oh absolutely it's absolutely. it's purely a question of whether or not they create a new game or if they remarket the old one Frankly, I think it would be a better decision to make a new game because I think that that would draw an enormous crowd. But if they port it on the if they port it for this if they port it for Smash Four, the least they could do is add in a couple of characters that I think desperately need to be on the roster, and I won't name them. But I think, but I would, well, I certainly wouldn't vote for it if there was another Smash roster. I'm certainly not opposed to the inclusion of a Monster Hunter figure. I, I think that's totally fine. I think it's I think it's well deserved since since Capcom has shown such loyalty to Nintendo by producing and publishing its games on Nintendo's consoles almost solely, uh, I think I think it would be a warranted decision, albeit not one that I would necessarily stand by. But indeed. Uh, but but what I think um, is interesting about the actual game, Monster Hunter Double Cross, uh, it seems to me to be, uh, I don't know, this is more of just sort of a, a suggestion that was sort of emanated from the, from the video that was sent, or from the video that was published to, uh, online, and I, and I really felt that it suggested perhaps a shift from what we've seen in previous Monster Hunter games, and perhaps a new, a new element that will be incorporated, and an element that I am 100% willing to stand behind. And that is the element of exploration. I really do think and I really do sense that this Monster Hunter is going to be pegging off of the success. And I know it was in development before Breath of the Wild, but I think it's pegging off of the ideas behind Breath of the Wild. As Nintendo and as Capcom and as Nintendo subsidiaries 
continue to become more and more comfortable with the prospect of open world sis of open world i really do get the feeling that even if monster hunter double cross is not going to be entirely open world like breath of the wild it's at least going to encompass a bit more exploration and open world feels than monster hunter three four generations ever possessed and and i'm totally in favor of that i'm not exactly sure how it's going to be executed but i think just based off of the trailer it looked like that is where they're tending to pivot i may be wrong but that's the sense that i got yeah i wasn't i in contrast i actually kind of saw it as rather formulaic you know, you go to a town, you have your central hub town. This one is in the air, which is pretty cool, you know, because Monster Hunter 3 is all about aquatic and the water and the ocean, you know, different themes in each Monster Hunter. And so I think having like a Monster Hunter where you're in the – the ships looked really cool, the the flying, the flying ships. I, I think it's a really cool theme that they can build upon. But I – when I watched the trailer, I got a different feel. I thought it was – well, this game is – a reimagining and kind of an expansion upon X generations. And since generations was still following the formula to a certain extent, therefore it stands to reason that this game would probably also follow the formula. Now, you know, you just said you might be wrong. I might be wrong about that. (laughs) We, We don't know. We don't have enough details yet to really conclude anything substantive. But to me, my impression when I watched the trailer was, you know, you seem to be doing the same things that you're doing in every Monster Hunter game. You go, you pick up your weapon, you kill monsters, you have a good time, you know. But it doesn't, again, the games have not really ever had too much of an emphasis on open world exploration. Well, they've had none. It's it's just a very, you know, a set path kind of thing where you go around the areas, you find the monster, you kill the monster, you know, or different objectives. But... I wouldn't be opposed to that. In fact, it would probably be a refreshing change, but I don't see I don't see Capcom fixing something that isn't broke, you know, as the old as the old statement goes. So, we'll see. We'll we'll see we'll see what they do if they change things up significantly with this game. Well, I doubt anyone would have said that the Zelda formula was broke prior to Breath of the Wild's release, but it certainly added a new a new dimension that in many ways made the series that was probably closest the closest to perfection as any gaming series could get even better and i think the same is true with monster hunter i think that yeah the formula for monster hunter is not broken but i think making it more open world will certainly not damage the franchise or not damage the 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 quality at all just from reviewing the trailer i've actually pinpointed a couple of scenes where i where i where i got the sensation and the first area was actually towards the end where you see the, the battlers and there's several of them and they're carrying shields and they're marching along a castle. And in the background, you can see the monster eons away and he starts approaching. And this is in the Japanese trailer that, the, that announced it's coming to the Switch. Uh, you can see the monster far away and then there's just this, there's this new aura of like combat and exploration and then there's that town scene where you can see like the town is much more expansive so while as i said yeah. i i highly i highly doubt it's going to be in fact i can almost guarantee you it's not going to be as open world as breath of the wild what yeah, i am saying is that i do think it's going to be more open world than previous games yeah, I, I really well do. Be. I really do see that happening. Again, I could be wrong, but I think that it's more likely that I'm not wrong. I think that I think that Capcom is going to make the decision to make this more open world. The extent to which it is open world is what is up for debate. But that there's there cannot be any argument the fact that they're going to make this game bigger, better, and more powerful than its predecessors. And I think one of the ways that it's going to manifest that's manifest that is through making it more open world indeed that could very well be and you make a couple good points there what i'll what i'll conclude here uh, on that subject is true you know zelda didn't really have any issues you know there wasn't any problems with the formula but we knew from the get-go 
since Breath of the Wild was in development, we knew what they wanted to do, the team's creative vision. We knew they wanted to create an open world Zelda, like from the start. Whereas with this game, it really hasn't been revealed or teased on that front. I mean, you could argue the trailer, but like it's, it's not something that's explicitly stated. And it's not a goal that Capcom's really said or, or put out there. And to me, the the Monster Hunter games, I mean, the, the previous three games have all been basically the, the same general formula. You know, each one just adds, you know, new monsters and new combat styles and whatnot. So with, again, just kind of, you know, beating a dead horse, since this game is an expansion on Generations... I would I would conclude that it's probably going to to stay with something that it doesn't really need major revolutionary change. There could be more ex- a little bit more exploration, but you know it's certainly not going to be on the scale of Breath of the Wild, and it's certainly just on the basis of how a Monster Hunter game plays. I I really don't see how how much more exploration you can get. I mean, we, we both know just from playing monster hunter three, how frustrating it is to find a non paint mold monster. Right. I, I'm not entirely sure that Capcom would want to only exponentially increase those frustrations by making their maps way larger. Right. And then that would be a problem that they'd be dinked for in the reviews. And it would decrease. It would probably lead to a more of a decrease in player experience rather than an increase. But I don't know. It's all speculative at this point. And I think we both agree that the game looks really fun. It looks really uh, like a really good installment. And we also both agree, I think, that it's a fantastic idea for them to bring it to the Switch. All right. Very good. <laughs> 